Now let's discuss voltage sensitive calcium channels. These also have subunits with 6 transmembrane segments with the segment 4 acting as a voltmeter and with the extracellular amino acids connecting segments 5 and 6 acting as the ionic filter. Calcium channels also string together 4 of their subunits to form a pore, in this case called an alpha 1 unit. There is no pore inactivator working as a plug for the calcium channels as was described above for the sodium channels. Instead, the amino acids connecting the 2 and 3 subunits work as a snare to hook up the synaptic vesicles and regulate the release of neurotransmitter. In all cases, the direction of ion flow is from outside of the cell to the inside when the channel is open. Now several proteins flank the alpha pore forming unit of the calcium channels called the gamma, beta and alpha 2 delta in which the delta part is transmembrane and alpha 2 part is extracellular. The alpha 2 delta protein is target to many psychotropic drugs such as anticonvulsants, pregabalin and gabapentin. These are also involved in regulating the conformational changes of the ion channel to change the way the ion channel opens and closes. Now as expected there are several subtypes of calcium channels as well. Calcium channels that are associated with ligand gated ion channels are members of an entirely different class of ion channels. The subtypes of calcium channels of most interest to psychopharmacology are those that are presynaptic and thus regulate neurotransmitter release and that are targeted by certain psychotropic drugs. Another interesting subtype is the L channel. These channels exist not only in the central nervous system but also on vascular smooth muscles where they regulate the blood pressure and where a group of drugs known as the dihydroxypyridines also known as the calcium channel blockers acts. Two other channels known as the R and the T channels are also of interest as some anticonvulsants and psychotropic drugs interact there. Now the presynaptic N and PQ channels are linked by molecular snares to the synaptic vesicles. Some experts think of this as a cocked gun loaded with neurotransmitter packed in a synaptic vesicle bullet. Now if a drug interferes with the ability of the channel to open and let in calcium, neurotransmission can thus be prevented, which actually may be desirable in states of excessive neurotransmission such as pain, seizures, mania and anxiety. When a nerve impulse invades the presynaptic area, this causes the charge across the membrane to change, in turn opening the calcium channels. This allows calcium to enter and makes the synaptic vesicle dock into and then merge with the presynaptic membrane, spilling the neurotransmitter. Anticonvulsants are thought to act on various sodium channels as well as calcium channels.